The purpose of this mission is to really improve the security and safety in the Philippines. Specifically, what we're doing here over the last few weeks and is continuing is the removal of 22 high-activity disuse sources from a number of devices, conditioning them and storing them in two large long-term storage shields. Radioactive sources have a variety of applications and they are really used worldwide in a number of applications. Things such as medicine, agriculture, industry. You find sources used throughout the world. Specifically to this project, devices are all teletherapy devices that were used for cancer treatment across the Philippines in either hospitals or research centers. Disused sources do present a vulnerability because they could be stolen or smuggled. Uh, in the worst case scenario, radioactive material could be used in something called a dirty bomb, um, which may cause um, effects on the human health as well as the environment. Probably to a lesser degree, but still important, is the panic that such an incident could cause, um, as well as the societal disruption. There may be also financial and political implications of the use of radioactive material. A hot cell is a shielded radiation containment chamber. It's called hot, not because of the outside temperatures here in Manila, but actually because what is to be handled in, inside the hot cell is highly radioactive material. Therefore, the people operating the hot cell have to be protected from the radioactivity. So what happens is trained operators manipulate the equipment inside of the hot cell using remote manipulators. So very similar to what you would see a joystick in a video game. There are a few steps before a source actually gets placed in the long-term storage shield. So it starts with a basic disassembly, so getting to a point where the source is accessible outside of the mobile hot cell. It's then um, lifted into the mobile hot cell where a source is often found within a device in something called a drawer. The first step within the mobile hot cell would be to extract the drawer from the device or the teletherapy head. At that point, it becomes um, an intricate process to actually remove the cap of the drawer and extract the source. Once it is extracted, it then gets placed into a capsule, again within the hot cell, which is then slid through a passageway into the long-term storage shield. The long-term storage shields have inherent security features, so the sources are welded in a capsule. They are then placed in the storage shields, which are bolted closed, covered, and then there's an additional cage that sits over top of the storage shields. The IAEA, over the course of numerous regional projects, acquired a lot of experience with conditioning low-activity um, radioactive sources. From this experience, the IAEA conceived the idea of the mobile hot cell for conditioning high-activity sources. The mobile hot cell has come from um, far away. In fact, it has come from South Africa, from a company called the Nuclear Energy Corporation of South Africa, or NEXA. They are the company responsible for the design and manufacture of this hot cell. And what is unique about it is that it is shipped, the hot cell and its associated equipment is shipped from South Africa to the country where the work is being done. Okay, that's fine. But while it's um, impossible to guard against zero risk, this is a more effective and efficient way of reducing the security risk that um, was present before.